see? Like, what is this? Our names are Mike and Heather. We're traveling the US in our van Appa on a mission to visit all 50 states. Subscribe and join us as we try to figure out this whole van life thing. As always, thanks for watching. Hello from state number 33, Nebraska. More specifically, we are at the Agate Fossil Bed National Monument at the very tippy top of Nebraska. So we just left South Dakota and have driven about an hour and a half to this location here. We've come here because there's a lot of really cool fossil activity and we're going to be doing two trails. So we're actually on the first one and it is the Fossil Hills Trail. We're just a little bit away from the visitor center at In one of- the only shaded parts that we could find. <laughs> yeah, it seems like they've got some benches with awnings to cover up to get out of the sun and the heat, which is definitely something we're grateful for today. But it's about a 2.7 mile loop for this Fossil Hills Trail but it does take you up to some really cool dig sites because this area is just a hotbed for fossils. The fossils here aren't necessarily dinosaurs, but they are prehistoric mammals. So just as cool, there's things like bear dogs and rhinoceroses and just really cool animal activity that they were able to dig up in each of these different sites. So all along the trail here, there have been little excavation areas and it tells you what they found in each of the places, including like a bear dog den. It's definitely been a very nice trail so far, minus all the grasshoppers that keep flying around because Mike is terrified of them. I don't like things that fly at you and the noise they make is really like unnerving. We have been on the lookout as well for rattlesnakes because those are in this area, mm -hmm. but fingers crossed we avoid any dangerous predator animals and we just do have a grasshoppers count? They, uh, they do count. I think they eat other things. Uh, but now we're actually on the second half of the hike. So we already saw the cool stuff and now we're going to head back to our van where there is that coveted AC that we're after. <laughs> See, like, what is this? What is that dance move? That's like kicking uh, bugs away. It's not a dance move, it's self defense. <laughs> what do you do when they land on you? Do you just like keep walking? Yeah. <laughs> This is the worst. I don't need you getting more messages of like, hey, you should date a real guy and not someone who's afraid of mice. Mouse! Or spiders. That one's like even bigger than the last one. Come on, Mike! <laughs> Which one was it in? Gross. Literally like chills. Get out of here, bugs. Mike survived the grasshopper attacks and we have made it back to our van safe and sound. We are heading back out from the visitor center towards the entrance to the park where there is the one mile Demon Elix Trail. There's really only two hiking trails here in this national monument area. This one you can see the different areas where they were actually doing the digging. Now we're gonna head to the one where you can actually see a fossil that's still in the wall, which is just too cool. It's really hot out there today. We have come to the Demon Elix Trail and Demon Elix is the name for the corkscrew shaped burrows that were created by a dry land beaver ancestor called Paleocaster. So we should be able to actually see some of those kind of set into the walls as we get up into the hills. You see it? Even though this was made by an ancient beaver, the animals, the paleocasters that made this would have probably behaved more similarly to prairie dogs. So they would have burrowed down in the spiral column with a flat area on the bottom. And actually the other hill that we just saw showed a lot of these demon elix spirals kind of clustered together. So similar to the prairie dogs that we saw, they probably would have lived in colonies. I think that scientists are able to see these and put all of those things together is really amazing. It is pretty cool to see all these fossil exhibits just on the side of the trail, almost like you would see in a museum, but out in the open, which is kind of a cool feature. But 
as we were heading down the highway after leaving the Agate Fossil Beds National Monument, we were looking in the distance in what I had assumed to be storm clouds. Heather correctly noted that that looked like smoke, so we got onto the internet and we're looking in this area if there was any kind of fires. And just off the road is a few really big fires going near the town of Gehrig. And so we did see that this was most likely caused by a lightning strike. It seems like there was maybe four separate fires started last night. But the good news is it's a sparsely populated area and they have been working on doing evacuations as well as evacuating livestock. Definitely hoping that there's no loss of property or any kind of harm done for it and that they're able to get it under control. We'll probably shelve some of the plans we have in this area just because because they're beginning to evacuate. It is still a pretty good ways away, but just to be on the safe side and not knowing exactly where all of that is happening, I think we'll probably try and skirt around where we are here. Because of the kind of fires that are going on in the area, we wanted to check with the Scotts Bluff National Monument before we went over there to make sure that they were open and that there would be no danger in going to that area. So they had recommended us avoiding the Wildcat Hills area, which I think is where that fire is sort of located, but they are still open and there shouldn't be any issues going to visit. So we are going to make our way over there. It's just about 12 minutes away from the Walmart that we pulled into to sort of figure everything out. So we should be uh, just a short drive away. You ready? All right. Good, how are you? Pretty good. Welcome to Scotts Bluff National Monument. We have come into the entrance of Scotts Bluff National Monument. It is our second stop here in Nebraska, and we have pulled up to the visitor center because we have to get our passport book stamped. But it sounds like there is a summit road up to the top of the bluff with some really cool overlooks. And we've gotten here in time to do that, so that's exciting. Scotts Bluff, which is this feature right here, and behind Mike, which we're gonna to drive to the top of, is a landmark along the Oregon Trail. So the Oregon Trail was a migration of people from the east to the west coast, and because there was no roads back then, when they were traveling by wagons, they needed landmarks to look for to know that they were on the right path. And Scott's Bluff is one of many along the Oregon Trail. So a very neat piece of history that we get to climb to the top of and not have to get all sweaty again, because we can do so in Appa. But first, we need to get that passport book stamped because we are having too much fun collecting them all. We are now on the summit road going to the top of the bluff and there are tunnels that we have to go through which is a nice surprise. We have made it to the top of the summit road here and had a great conversation with a couple of locals about the area and are just really excited to get to the top. We can actually see Chimney Rock, which is another famous monument to the right of us along the Oregon Trail and I'm out of breath. It's really cool because I didn't think we were going to be able to get to see it on this trip, but I guess that's the whole point is that you can see it for miles and miles away and that's how they were able to know where they were going throughout the whole state. It's probably about 30 miles, which in and of itself is amazing that you can see all the way across. This is just an absolutely amazing geological feature that was a wayfinding point on the Oregon Trail. We are headed back down the scenic road now that we have made it to the top of the bluff and have seen Chimney Rock. We are heading back down to do some chores because we have a lot of laundry in the back and I don't know if eating counts as a chore but we're also hungry so we're probably gonna find some food and or make some food as well. And Appa needs a bath. Oh yeah and we need to wash the van and maybe find some showers ourselves as well because we did get kind of sweaty today. We also need to clean the windshield because as you can see it's pretty dirty there as well. I think some of that is inside dirt too. <laughs> That's great. I can't get up heavy on my own The world is moving on I'm still standing here Searching for steady ground A place to settle down No reasons left to find One day I'll change 
So we have come to Lake Minnetare State Park here in Nebraska and we are super excited because there are showers, laundry, and plenty of space to cook dinner. And it won't come easy, but I know it's worth the fight. And I will run across the river. You ready? Heather created a fantastic dinner, braving the bugs, which as we are aware after today, I am not an enormous fan of. So tonight we are having tacos, which I am super stoked for. I doused myself with bug spray, knowing full well that I was gonna take a shower in about two minutes after we finish this meal. So let's eat so I can shower all this off. We opened the door to go take showers, which feels great by the way, but now all the bugs are in here. So Mike's on bug smack and duty. Oh my gosh, there's so many of them. Here. Yeah, we, we need to invest in a fly swatter. We're gonna get all these bugs out one way or the other and get to bed because tomorrow morning is a bright and early day. We have one more chore to do, which is laundry. Unfortunately, all the washing machines were full and uh, we don't want to keep going in and out with the bugs even though now, because it is so late, they may not be full. Good morning, we are on our way to a laundromat, but before we do that, we have to do some dishes. Last night got way too buggy out here to do that. So first on our list this morning is dishes, then throwing out the trash, then laundry. We've decided to add to our chore list, getting water because there is an H2O little fill up shipping container area here in Scotts Bluff which we drove into for laundry. We figured we'd just go back into town rather than doing it at the campsite because we had to be out in a few hours anyways and didn't want to do all the timing stuff. But we're getting water because then we don't have to worry about it as we're going into our next state. Five gallons of cold, fresh water that we'll deal with later. <laughs> that was really good. A dollar twenty-five for five gallons. I think we've paid that much for a bottle of water, so that worked out really well. Yeah, off to laundry. No questions asked. I'm just hanging around. I sit right here. I'm just spending my time. There's not a lot to do. We have checked off the final chore on our to-do list that we have created for ourselves here in Nebraska, which is laundry. So if you look to you, all right, we now have all of the laundry that we could possibly need that will hopefully get us through the next state that we're going to, which is Colorado. Yes, I'm very happy. This is the last shirt that I have that is clean. The shorts I'm wearing are shorts that I normally would just sleep in. So I'm very happy to get the laundry done. Nebraska was really cool. We had just a quick trip through, yeah. so I think it's a place we'll have to visit again in the future. Mm -hmm. But I am so excited to visit Colorado. It's somewhere I've been before, but not ever as an adult with our own itinerary set. So that is going to be so cool. I can't wait to get into state number 33. No, I think... Or is it 34? 34. Wow, we are really flying through these states. I really had no expectations of Nebraska, but I was pleasantly surprised by the landscapes, how nice the people were, and just the overall vibe. So not knowing anything about Nebraska before this trip, I'm really excited to go back. Thank you all for watching our Nebraska adventures. And if you've been following along with us through all the other states, thank you for watching those as well. We really appreciate each and every one of you and are really having a blast on this journey and are happy that you can come along. So we'll see you all next in Colorado.